Um, Max, well, I'm going to talk about CryptoKitties. CryptoKitties is a project that we built in our company. And I'm going to explain to you what we learned about it and the mistake we made and the thing we did right and why do we think blockchain is important. First of all, I'm a software engineer. My name is Maximiliano Castro. I work at Axiom Zen. Um, part of the core team of CryptoKitties, I joined, like, I, I was one of the first to join the team. We, at Axiom Zen, we build different products, different projects, and yeah, CryptoKitties was just one another, was just another one. Uh, I am a cat person. Those are actually my cats. Uh, you can find me in GitHub or Twitter through that handle. The first I need to say is that we want to open up the blockchain to the masses. We want to make it accessible. We want to make it not only usable for like people that understand it, we want to make it work for other people, but people that don't know as much of, of computers or don't know how to mine or stuff like that. And CryptoKitties was our first attempt at doing that. And it went pretty well, actually. We got, I don't know, like 250,000 new wallet signups. We got more than 100 kitties sold over 10,000 US dollars and some and seven or eight for over $100,000. Uh, we have more than 700,000 kitties right now and we created an economy of around $40 million. Recently, we received a $12 million funding from VCs, investors in San Francisco and United States in general. So, what's CryptoKitties? CryptoKitties was, or is, one of the first blockchain games, and it was actually the first one known by the masses. We got a lot of media, and we got a lot more success than what we expected. Like, at the beginning of CryptoKitties, it was like a, kind of like a, internally we named it like a toy project, like something we just wanted to try to do something with Ethereum, but it went really well. So in CryptoKitties, you can breathe, collect, and sell and trade kitties with other people. Uh, every kitty is unique. It has its own genes, and the genes can be mutating based on their parents. When you breed two kitties, you will get new, new genes based on that. And each kitty has a set of attributes. It goes from eight to 10 right now. And based on that, the image of the kitty is generated. There are also like fancy cats. There are special cats that are obtained by getting a specific set of attributes, and you will get that. So now I'm going to speak a bit about blockchain. I'm not really an expert of blockchain. This is things that I have learned during the process of working on CryptoKitties. Blockchain is a basically a decentralized registry or a decentralized database where where everything is secure by default. It's, you cannot cheat in blockchain, or it's pretty hard, because everything is done by a cryptographic, secure, mathematical, complex, complex mathematical for, uh, work that you need to do to validate a block in the blockchain. So it's also decentralized, or in most of the cases, it's decentralized. Uh, the network is not owned by a single entity. It's like a bunch of nodes running and people processing the, <laughs> the blockchain, pr processing the blocks in the blockchain that handle the, the that handle or make the network run. Each record in the blockchain is a block. Uh, a block contains information that is like the hatch of the previous block and all the transactions that that were processing during that block. Um, everything worked through a trustless system where basically you don't have to trust in the people that are in the network because the, 
to validate something, you have to do a proof of work, which is the algorithm of consensus that uh, Ethereum uses in this case. So, yeah. Uh, all the users have to have keys, private and public keys. Every transaction is signed by a private key that can be later verified. And, well, as I mentioned before, it's a network of nodes. And a block is processed and accepted. Every time a block is processed and accepted, uh, the miner that, that process, process that block gets a reward in this case. is I think at this moment with Ethereum is 5 Ether, which is like the currency of Ether. Uh, the problem with, with this is that many miners can be trying to process different blocks. And to work on that, it can create forks or different net, the, the network can go in different directions. So to handle this, there is a protocol that is called the ghost protocol that simply it picks the path with most work done. That's pretty much what they do. The first blockchain was in, invented in 2008, or the white paper was released in 2008, and the first mm, block was mined on, at the beginning of 2009 by a person called Satoshi, Nak Satoshi Nakamoto, which until this day nobody knows who that person is. Some people actually think that he is a uh, a group of persons that are trying to fight the centralization of banks. So why did we use Ethereum? Why didn't we use Bitcoin? Bitcoin only support a limited set of transactions and it's mostly about currency and payment. Like you can trade bit you can send Bitcoin, you can buy Bitcoins, but you cannot do so much else. Like it's limited what you can do. In the case of Ethereum, which is right now the second largest blockchain, there, there are like several blockchains running right now, uh, it supports smart contracts, which are, has its own language. It's called Solidity. And it's pretty similar to JavaScript, kind of, but with types. It's similar. It looks a bit like TypeScript. I don't know if someone knows it. Uh, the good thing about smart contracts is that you can define rules about what you want to do with your with your code, or you can like trigger actions with an input and get an output that can modify the state of the blockchain. Uh, the result of the blockchain of, this, of the smart <coughs> the result of the smart contract are stored in the blockchain forever. It doesn't change, so you can see the same transaction. 10 years from now, well, probably, and you can see what happened with that specific action. And also, it's decentralized. We don't have control of the code. Like, someone can just use a smart contract however they see fit. So what's the difference between decentralized and centralized? A centralized app or a centralized service is something that is controlled by a single entity. In this case, for example, I don't know, Facebook is controlled by Facebook company, or all the games like, I don't know, World of Warcraft or Titanfall, whatever. If they shut down the game, you lose everything, and the game disappears. There is no way to, to keep playing that. Well, WoW actually, yes, because there are like some, uh, well, doesn't matter. And also, there are like, Centralized blockchain, which one is Ripple, is the blockchain is controlled by a single entity, and so is the the currency they have. But on the centralized network, no single entity has control. There is like miners can process, but miners could sabotage or something, but they will need like more than 50% of the miners to do that, and it will be super hard to do it at this moment, the way it is built. So we think something is really cool about blockchain is that you can implement collectibles, especially with a smart contract. And collectibles could mean, could be good for, especially for gaming, that's something I'm going to talk later on this talk, because you can prove that you are the owner of an asset in the block, 
a digital asset in the blockchain. So each token can be unique, an item or, I don't know, uh, a skin or something like that can be stored in the blockchain. So it will be a huge opportunity for gaming in game items. One of, of the source of inspiration for us in CryptoKitties was CryptoPunks. It's, uh, it's another collectible kind of game, but the difference is that you cannot, when they release the contract, they have a limited amount of punks that you can buy and you can trade and, se and sell it afterward, but you cannot create more afterwards. Like, that's all you can get. Uh, it's loosely based in one standard, it's called ARC20. ARC20 is a standard of fungible tokens that is pretty much like a coin or a money is a fungible because you don't get to know what's the difference between one coin and the other. Like one Bitcoin is the same as other Bitcoins so you don't know which specific Bitcoin you use. Uh, yeah, that's the main difference. What we did for CryptoKit is we defined a, a, new, a new standard and it, this was drafted by our technical architect called Dieter Tierley. And where we wanted to do like each token in the smart contract has to be unique, has to be its own ID, it was easily identifiable and you can know who is the owner. So that's pretty good for what we wanted to do with CryptoKitties because that way we, well, we can simulate rarity and scarcity. So I don't know, it's for like collectibles in this case. You can, it will, the less tokens with the same values there are, more value they could have. So why kitties? Why not dogs, fish, or maybe some TV show character? Well, kitties on the internet. Like, you will see it everywhere, anywhere. Like, you probably saw a lot of pictures of kitties in the internet. What are you doing there? So, what we have in our Catifesto actually is like, in our website, is that cats are impossible to understand. They ambassador, ambassadors for files, memes, and, well, Facebook pages. Kitties uh, well, can be seen anywhere. Uh, we know that if Kitty is already on the internet, why not do the same with the blockchain? And the other reason is that we think that the future is exciting. And we believe blo blockchain is the future, or at least part of it, the future. But blockchain is not approachable the way it is. It's like only for really hardcore nerds that understand that but most of the people cannot understand. We're gonna feature for everyone, not only for Bitcoin miner, VCs, ICOs. ICOs, by the way, is a way to sell tokens in the blockchain, another equally fun acronym. So we want to make blockchain accessible to the masses. So now I'm going to explain the process to develop CryptoKitties. This is our team. Well, I'm not in the picture because I am from Chile and the company where I work is in Vancouver, Canada. I work remotely. The process was approximately one month research to see what we could do with blockchain, what were the limitations that you have in the smart contracts and different kind of, of research. Then we have 2.5 months building the actual project. Uh, we did the smart contracts. We have three smart contracts. Uh, we did the backend part of the app where we use like a different set of technologies to read from the blockchain and write in our database and that kind of things. And also like the rendering engine that we decided to use, decided to, to use to generate the kitties. Um, the app that most of the people use. We have to investigate a lot of, about how to send transactions to the browser, how to read from the blockchain, those kind of things we had to do. Then 
as I mentioned, we defined ARC721, which was a standard we used for CryptoGitties. Then we had a bounty program, we had a launch, a beta launch, and then the launch. Ahora, now I'm going to explain a bit more in detail about this. So we also made some mistakes. It, well, I don't know if you are developers or not, but software usually don't go well at the first try. Like, that happens a lot. One of the first mistake we did was use headless Chrome. It's a really cool tool. It's like to run a browser, but like a Chrome version, but in the command line. Uh, the problem is, is that it's pretty heavy to run, especially in the server. And we were using Heroku, which is a, a hosting provider. So it's not as good for that kind of environment because it, it, it can be slow, it uses a lot of memory. So it wasn't that good for us. And since we were a small team, we didn't have like the resources to, to have like a DevOps person setting up a, machines for us with a specific ad hoc environment. So we had to go with something simple. And the second problem is that with headless Chrome, we had to use like PNG image and we put one image over the other. And it was pretty hard to manipulate that image to generate different colors, different shapes and everything. That would mean that the designer would have to make all the possible combinations of colors or we have to modify the image on the fly. And that was pretty complicated. In the end, we use SVGs, which is another graphic uh, format. We, it's loose, it's based on HTML, so it's a lot of XML, uh, so there is a lot of tags, and you can modify the, the SVG just with the, with the code. In this case, we use uh, a template engine for, to do that, and just, we just pass parameters and change the colors, the shapes, and everything. Another problem that we have was the lack of definition. Since this re was a kind of like a, a toy project or something like that, we didn't know some things that we, how we wanted to do. One of the first issues we had with this was uh, the contract that is basically the contract that allows you to buy and sell kitties was uh, made like a bid auctions, like a normal auction, like probably like eBay or any other auction where someone has to bid something and the next person has to pass you and so on. The problem with that is that we needed to hold the either in the contract if we wanted to do it that way. Otherwise, the person could like just not pay at the end. And the other problem is that every time the user wanted to bid on something, we'll have to sign a new transaction that will cost money because to send new transactions in the blockchain, you have to pay a fee that is called gas. So basically, every time you have to bid, you have to pay again. So what we did in the end was when you create an action, you put an initial price and a final price, and the price is decreasing or increasing based on, the, on how it was set. And when you get to a point where you think it's OK to, to buy it, you buy it at the price it's showing the rate. So we don't have bids and anything like that. And the other thing that was constantly changing is the number of categories that we were going to have. We didn't know if we're going to have like eight, 10, 12. The, also the storage in Ethereum is pretty expensive. So we were thinking of using like an int of 512 bits instead of like 256, two, 256 but that will be most costly, and we didn't know if we needed that amount of space in the blockchain. Another thing that we have was bugs, like usually in software. We had to delay our release more than once because we didn't, we didn't have what we, we didn't have everything ready for the time we wanted to release it. We wanted to release it on November 10, but we weren't ready for that. So it was pretty bad because the community was excited to, uh, to release it and we had like a big wait, wait list of people waiting for to, to play the game. But in the end, we had to release on 28. 
Uh, and that's another lesson that we learned. Never promise like dates so fixed unless you're pretty sure that you're going to be able to release at that date. Another thing we had is that we have a bug in the contract. Uh, it was a pretty big bug. We had to launch the contract again in the blockchain. And that means that we need to kill all the cats that existed in the pre beta version that we were playing. We had the like, internal version with some testers and the people in the company. And we had to like start over and kill all the giddies and well basically start again. And why we had to do that? So we don't have to fix it later because otherwise it will have been super expensive to pass all the giddies from one contract to the other. But we also did things right. Not everything was bad, not everything was uh, that complicated. We released like a first version of our site, like a landing page for announcing that we were participating on Eat Waterloo, which is a hackathon. It was a, well, it was like a waiting list and it, that worked al really well. And then we went to Eat Waterloo and uh, well, hackathon oriented to Ethereum, and it was focused on creating new use cases for the network. So in it Waterloo, besides working on CryptoKitties, the team that went there built an MVP of analytics on the blockchain. It was a pretty simple, uh, simple product where you, where we were ready. <coughs> Sorry. It was a pretty simple product where we built some graph and we read from the blockchain and some from the events on the blockchain to show how a contract was behaving. Also, we did some play tests with the user, with the people that were participating in the hackathon. We, people read a lot of CAD. I don't remember exactly the number. We were using the test network of Ethereum, so we, they didn't have to pay anything to play. And they give us a lot of feedback and we did also like a contest to s give some ether and some an access to the, the game when we actually launch for the people that breed on a specific kitty. Uh, this, this user was actually, well, with this, we get a, a wait list for the, our site for our launch. And also this user continued to helping us when we launched the Bounty program. The Bounty program was something we did before the release for bug, for bugs in the smart contract. Since changing the smart contract is pretty expensive and pretty complicated, uh, we decided to do a bounty program releasing the source of our code and making people that was pretty familiar or experienced with uh, Solidity to check it and found, find inbox. This helped us, uh, helped us a lot. We got three major bugs that we actually gave them some special cuts to them and some either. And that went really well and we managed to fix the issues before launching. So we finally got to 28, November 28. And it went really well actually. We had a lot of sites talking about us. We went pretty viral, like even sites that were focused on the mass media, like BBC, we were uh, interviewed by BBC, Bloomberg, Vice, Fortune, a, a lot of Wall Street Journal, like pretty well known uh, sites of media. And we also, yeah. <clears throat> We kept getting, we kept getting cover, and people still talking about us. Actually, when we had the fundings, we had a lot of interviews and stuff like that. It was really a really interesting experience, especially for something like we, for me at least, we never expected to have this much of uh, attention. Another cool thing was this kitty was sold. This is the number one kitty. And it was sold for more than 100,000 US dollar at the moment. I don't know how much that will be worth in either, but yeah, it was a lot. 
and that person still has the kitty like I don't know he's keeping it just because he wanted probably so when we release we have like four days of beta and we actually went to in in those days of beta we were one, we were one of the top three most active ethereum contracts in the first day of launching like people were doing transaction like crazy as i mentioned kitty number one was adapt and just in december we have like 50 million us dollar in transactions like people buying and, and breeding kitties but we also learned some lessons and something that you need to know about it uh, one of the good thing is that our marketing team did really well the participation in it waterloo was a big success and the, those give us like a big wait list of people wanting to play so when we launch we have a lot of people expecting to be able to play but not everything went well we have this issue about the network actually like the first two weeks of crypto kitties the ethereum network was pretty much useless like it was pretty hard to play it was pretty hard to do anything in the blockchain in ethereum actually more than 25 percent of all transactions were done in in crypto kitties contracts and the network was pretty slow it was really slow to process a transaction actually a lot of like serious companies were doing work in the blockchain in ethereum were really busy with us because we learned something like they think it's a toy and we are like blocking them from making real stuff and the other thing is that the gas price increased and actually made us lo lo lose a lot of money i don't remember the exact number but we lost over ten thousand dollars because of this because we had this for a kitty to give beard or for a kitty to be born someone need to call give beard on the mother of the kitty and we have a process that runs that but we also have, have some people that does this because every time you call give beard you can get some ether back from the user that paid for that kitty but when the price when the gas price was so high the the profit profit they were made was actually negative so they were losing money every time a kitty was born so they decided to stop doing it but we wanted to keep doing it because we needed to keep the kitties uh, giving birth so we actually had to pay the extra fee and lose some money in the end we have to like increase the price uh, we had to increase the price and which was also like a bad thing for us because people were, were not happy of having to pay like 10, 10 more times of what they pay already for for breeding a kitty another problems we had when we released was the block confirmation was too low so in the blockchain everything is immutable but not always the blockchain has to like well when we you when you have some forks the blockchain has to reorder the blocks and process the the real order and in those cases we had the confirmations too low so we didn't wait for other blocks to give us like uh feedback that w this was actually what happened so we were like having kitties that were born with the wrong attributes we were sending emails to the people that the kitty was born and that was incorrect so we had that synchronization issue with or confirmation issue so the thing is that you need to wait a few blocks before accepting something from the blockchain because that's prone to change at least for like at least three or four blocks another issue we have was our database since we have so much demand we had to scale up our database a lot like because it was actually not not working well enough to handle all the amount of transactions because we have like a centralized server where we have our database and some things are in the server and other things are on the blockchain 
and well, we have to like scale up. We have to move to another provider because our provider was not didn't have option to scale up more. So we are working in with AWS right now, and we have to create like replicas and reading replicas and writing replicas to increase the performance of our database. And the last problem we had was get. Get is a software that we use to synchronize and read from the blockchain. But this software, it's really good. It's actually like the base for miners for everything, and it's supported by the actual, actually by the Ethereum Formation, uh, Foundation. But it has some problems. Sometimes it lost connection with the peers, with the other nodes, and it gets slow to synchronize with the blockchain. So I don't know. Sometimes we are in the blockchain. 500 and or get was in a blockchain in the block 400 so we had to restart or we had or something was stuck which led us to have like a unsynchronized state in our site and that made us like uh, for example some kitties were born but they didn't appear in the site because they or get was this wasn't synchronized or also like for example, uh, kitties were up for sale, appears like someone was selling, but someone already bought the, the kitty, so it, it wasn't for sale anymore. Uh, after we launched, some people started like building stuff or building a community around us. One of the cool things about blockchain is that it empowers an open developer platform. Uh, it's not like most of the apps because you are forced to only use, well, in the case of any centralized app, you are forced to use their service to do stuff like, I don't know, Facebook, Twitter, you have to use their service or their APIs. With this, you anyone can use a smart contract. Anyone can interact with a smart contract and read from it and call the actions and everything. Uh, so, Developers can build on top of that and can create their own their own games or their own things on top of other contracts. And since sorry, one second. Well, uh, People can collaborate and do things with the blockchain without knowing each other because the smart contract is there. They can r read the rules, and that's it. Within months, we get several projects, really fun projects. But also, like, over there, there is also like the opportunity to play the game the way you want. Like, someone could actually spin up a server and a platform where each kitty, instead of being a kitty, can be a dog, a fish robot, whatever, and they can use our own data and our contracts if they want. It doesn't make a lot of sense because they won't get money from it or everything, like all the fees will still go to us, but they can do it if they want, or they can put something on top of our contract and do the transfer by their sem themselves. So the number of projects that can be made in blockchain on top of things are pretty much limitless, like whatever they can think about. Those are some examples that we have. I'm going to name only one or two that are the most interesting. In this case, one that I want to mention is Kitty Race. Kitty Race is a really cool project where you can bet on your kitty to run like a competition with other kitties. And this was built on top of our smart contract. And the cool thing about this is that they use our attribute system, so some names that look like speed or velocity or something like that are faster than others or, or some other have more control or stuff like that. So basically the, your kitty can be better or not for the race. Another cool thing is like, another cool thing is like kitty hats is another uh, smart contract that is also built on top of your kitty. And this one allows you to put accessories on your kitty. Well, this is also centralized and decentralized because they have their side where you you can see your kitty with the image on top, like with glasses, hats, or accessories and stuff like that. And some other tools for people to read or to find kitties. Actually, this is pretty good because they 
help us build features that we don't have the time to build. Like they have a really good uh, tools to handle trading or to handle information about Catrius that we actually don't have in our site, but since it's open, they can do it. And also they have done some really complicated spreadsheets to read genes, to read the information of the GIDI, to read the blockchain. That's pretty neat. And we also have some, well, copycats, maybe it's a bad word, but some lookalike that were born after CryptoKitties. One of the more interesting that I can see right now is there is one called Axie, which is not here, but it's also like breathable and you can train them and, some, and stuff like that. And also like it's crypto robots where you can fight and train your robots and it's also like collectibles. Uh, there are some really interesting projects going on based on what we did from CryptoKitty. What we want to do in the future then? We're working really hard to make our game more engaging and fun. We have a lot of things planned, but these are, are like the main thing that we want to focus in the future. One of the things is launching the mobile app. We are working on it. We had some issues with Apple, and we're trying to figure that out on how to release it. We are actually we are working on the Android app also. We want to use IPFS which is a storage, decentralized storage where we can store the cats instead of having it in our own servers. And that way we will put all the information of the cat, the image of the cat in, in IPFS so people can be actually the owner of that kitty and we will put the hash of that specific uh, metadata in the blockchain so people can know who is the owner of that kitty and who is the owner of that specific item and then can, they can use the image however they see fit. We want to expand the market. We're working really hard on translate the app in different languages and that's another focus we want to keep going. We are continually working on new features. We are improving the search. We are launching, we recently launched a uh, cat decks which is a way to see if you have all the possible traits of cats. We are working uh, in all those different things, and we are uh, about to launch some interesting partnerships for CryptoKitties. Another thing we want to do is empower the developer community, or the community, they can, so they can build uh, uh, around us. And we want to put our information in a way that is more accessible for them not having to rely on our API that is also limited because we have to limit it for, for performance reasons, so we are working on ways to improve that. And now I'm going to briefly go a bit about what I think blockchain and gaming can be or could work. I want to start with this. This is a, f this is a phrase from a guy from A16S. C partner, Chris Dixon. So the next big thing is usually dismissed as a toy. And that happened before a lot of time. The telephone was dismissed as a toy because the telegram was more reliable, the quality for long distance uh, communication. But, and the telephone didn't sound well, it has quality issues and everything, but with the time the technology went in improving, and um, well, we see that the telephone is still here, but the telegram, the te Telegraph is not here anymore. Or the computer, the first computer that Apple II, people think it was a dog, it was a, like a toy. Computer were only used for work, and now most of you probably, or all of you have access to a computer in whatever sense. Also VR, VR is getting really, is improving fast, and the price is going lower. I'm going to be a bit faster so I can answer some questions. So we think that the adoption of blockchain will be through games and entertainment, not just ICOs and complicated financial apps. We want to, we think that we have to do a way to make it more accessible for everyone. And this is a interesting uh, tweet about Facebook. 50% of the traffic of Facebook was, was attracted by Farmville and actually Facebook was really popular because of games at the beginning. 
once they got more popularity and more people get w were used to it, Facebook started killing the games. Like, I don't know, games are not so popular in Facebook anymore. But the gaming market is huge. And we, ha we think that it can still be disrupted. It doesn't have to be the way it is right now. It can be improved some way. The winner in the gaming industry is like probably like 1%. This is not like a statistical number or anything, but only like gaming companies get money from games and only some specific eSport challengers or people that play all the time or that play in a competitive way. But people that also spend a lot of time playing, like for example, people that spend thousands of hours in a on a wall or any game, uh, but they cannot do anything with their items. If they lose their, their account, everything, the value they have there doesn't matter anymore. We think that we can replicate a bit the collectibles in the physical world. So we think we can have physical collectibles. We, so I mean, in physical collectibles, Collectibles, the ownership is real, and there is a scarcity. There are like some items that do, don't print anymore. For example, this card of magic doesn't exist anymore. You have to buy one of the, the already existing, or this coin in this case. We, we, before we had some digital collectibles like those Tamagotchi or Pokemon where we you could collect Pokemons, but they were limited and they don't have much value to be honest. Like, a complete game of Pokemon probably is not more, ex way more expensive than a normal Pokemon game. And we also have web base or game collectibles. These are really old games, but these also apply to games right now. A lot of games right now are having like loot box, skins, and stuff like that, that you can get, but there is no way to get a profit of that, unless, well, except in probably some different cases. But once you stop playing the game, all the things you have doesn't have more value anymore. So right now the state is that your assets in game actually don't have a real value. Uh, to make a profit of this, you have to be in the competition, in the performance, or you have to be really popular in Twitch or something like that with people watching your streams and that kind of things. But that's only limited to a certain amount of people. It's not for all. And if you want to trade or sell items of a game, you have to usually use unregulated marketplace because games usually don't allow you to profit from their items. So you have to, I don't know, risk to lose an account or risk to lose money or the items, whatever. And trading and collecting items only belong to a specific game. You can do a lot of quests in a game, but if you go to next game, that doesn't exist anymore. And items are controlled by a centralized part uh, for a centralized server, so an item ca an item can be removed or duplicated or I don't know affecting affecting the value of them of that. So we think that in gaming we can use the blockchain mostly for collectibles because right now the blockchain is not ready to handle the amount of processing that requires a game. So the, right now what we can do is storage in the blockchain, sa safe storage, the items and everything in the, in the blockchain. You can have full ownership of everything you get in the game and you can trade it. You can have a scarcity and ownership. And assets can exist in multiple or, or different games. Like probably if you get some items in a game, you could use it in an X game if they want to make it available, like if they want to read from the previous contract or the previous uh, data, they can use it to continue the progress in the next game. And well, people could be build stuff around that. So we think that the future gaming, the content is decentralized, so items and the things you can get and, they, and can be used in multiple universes, but the gameplays must be centralized. At least for now, because one, because there is no way to update the, the content of the of the blockchain right now, unless you redeploy and everything, 
and that's pretty hard to do and it's not as com not as manageable as you can do with a game with a normal game so and also like the blockchain can process a certain amount of transaction at the time it cannot process uh, like the speed of the transaction is limited and we think that gaming can be done on chain and off chain so that's what we are thinking and player will be compelled to complete quests or getting items because they can actually profit from that and they could actually people that plays a lot and are good at this can make like a living with this so uh, that's another opportunity in the gaming market so if you want to do something you can help us blockchain is a unexplored market it's pretty new there is still a lot of opportunity here to work uh, there is a big opportunity on the collectibles in the blockchain there is also like a big opportunity not only in games it can also be part of art maybe an artist can sell their the rights of you, their content through blockchain and also if you want to do something with crypto kitties uh, the code is pretty open source. We have only one part that is not op not, not open, and uh, in and it's only because we don't want to like ruin ruin the fun of the game. So it's the part of the genetic code generation. But everything else is pretty open. You can see it in the you you can see it, and you can build on top of us. So if you want to build something, you can contact us. And as we I mentioned, we're trying to to improve the to empower the community to do stuff with us that's it thank you